Okay, guys, it's time for, I believe, chapter six of Dump the Chump. I was outside walking my dogs, and I realized I promised, and I haven't posted a chapter in a while. Thanks for the Zoom call today. It was so nice to see your faces, and I'm looking forward to talking to some of you on Saturday. All right, chapter six. I waited until Tuesday night before I started on step number five put fake ad in paper from parents. Since I already knew how to write a personal ad, this one was going to be the easiest step so far. All I needed to do was write a couple of quick lines and call it into the paper by Wednesday afternoon. I figured it wouldn't take much time, so after dinner, I watched a couple of TV shows. Then I took a shower and I headed to my room. Unfortunately, just as I pulled out my secret notebook, Robert pounded on the door. Oscar, Oscar, open up. I've got something I need to show you. I didn't want to let him in, but if I didn't, he might get suspicious. So I shoved my notebook in my pillowcase and went to the door. As soon as I opened it, Robert pushed his way into my room, carrying a big mayonnaise jar full of holes punched in the lid. He was carrying a mayonnaise jar with holes punched in the lid. Look, Oscar, look what Franklin Brady gave me. He just dropped it off in the house. Robert held up the jar to show me. I shrugged. What does that look like? Spiders, big deal. What's so exciting about spiders? You probably have more bugs than, than that living in your ears. Robert looked insulted. See, that just goes to show how dumb you are, Oscar. He said, in the first place, spiders aren't bugs and they are not members of the insect family. In fact, and in the set, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. In fact, spiders aren't bugs. They're not even members of the insect family, in fact. And the second, in the second place, these aren't ordinary spiders. These are genuine black widow spiders. Franklin borrowed them from his teacher. They're doing a science project at school. I pretended to yawn. Yeah, sure they are, doofus. Robert stood there for a second, and then a sly, a sly little smile appeared on his face. What do you think a sly little smile looks like? Kind of like, mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, fine. If you don't believe me that they're really black, okay. You don't believe me they're really black widows. I guess I'll just have to give you a closer look, he said. Then, before I could stop him, he unscrewed the lid, turned the jar upside down on my floor. There, now you can see them perfectly well, he said. He laughed and ran out of my bedroom, shutting the door behind him. I looked down. Black widows were taking off, running in all different directions. Robert, come back here. I mean it. You get these things back in the jar, I yelled. I started after him and then quickly stopped. If I moved, I would lose track of where those spiders were running. And the thought of not knowing where they were made me feel sick. Mom, Dad, come quick, I need you, I shouted. And then I felt it. What do you think he felt? Ow! I looked at my foot. Out of one of the spiders was running across the top of my big toe. I froze in fear. I froze in fear. Oh no, oh no, I've been bitten by a black widow spider. Help, please, someone call 911, emergency. I must have shouted for three or four minutes before my mother finally opened the door. By then, I was almost all shouted out. Oh gee, I'm glad to see you finally made it, mother, I said sarcastically. I'm sorry to take you away from your TV show, but I seem to be having a slight problem here. Nothing to worry about, really. It's just that I've been bitten by a deadly spider. At that point, I lost track of the spiders and sat down on my bed. My father came in. Hey, hey, hey. What's all the hollering about in here, he said. I held up my foot. This, and I pointed at my foot. This is what the hollering's about, Dad. I just thought you and Mom might like to know that I won't be coming to breakfast tomorrow morning. I have a feeling that being dead takes your appetite away. Dead, I repeated, D-E-A-D, -E 
as in the boy is dead from a black widow bite. I pointed to the bite mark. See, see that little red mark there? That's the mark a black widow leaves after it poisons you to death. My father shook his head. A black widow spider? No, I doubt it, Oscar, he said. I've lived here all my life and I've never even seen one black widow spider. Oh well, then today must be your lucky day, Dad, because there are five black widows running around in this room to, right this very minute. Just then, we heard a giggle from the hall. What do you think it sounded like? My father went out and pulled Robert into my room. Okay, let's hear it, Robert. What do you know about this, he said. But Robert was laughing so hard, he couldn't make sense out of any, you couldn't make sense out of anything that he said. He knows everything about it, I said. Robert's the jerk who set them loose in here. His friend stole the black widows from his teacher and then Robert dumped them out on my rug. I tried to calm my voice. When you've, when you've been poisoned, it's probably a good idea not to use all your strength at once. I took some deep breaths. Would would anyone be interested in getting me to a hospital? I asked, or would it, or would that make you people miss too much TV tonight? By now, Robert was laughing so hard, he almost seemed like he was in pain. My parents couldn't take their eyes off of him. I had to do something to get their attention. I gasped for breath and fluttered my eyes. What do you think that looked like? <gasps> and fluttered my eyes. Mom, Dad, are you still here? Everything is getting hazy. That's when Robert really lost it. He let out a loud hoot, and he collapsed on the floor, screaming, laughing. You dope, he said between gulps of laughter. Those weren't black widows. They were just little spiders from under our front porch. My father was infuriated. He grabbed my brother by the feet and pulled him out of my room. Robert was still holding his stomach and laughing. Did you hear him, Dad? Oscar said that everything was getting hazy. What a dork. I wanted to crawl in a hole. I mean it. For a second, I almost wish I had been bitten by a black widow. Anything would have been better than the humiliation I was feeling. Mom glanced at my foot again. Well, whatever kind of spider it was, it definitely bit you. I'll go see if I can find something to put on it. A few minutes later, she came back into my room carrying two cans. One was the first aid spray. The other was insect spray. After she sprayed my bite with antiseptic, she took the insect spray and really let the spiders have it. She used the whole can almost. There, she said finally, that ought to kill them. I coughed. Them? What about me? It smells terrible in here, I said. Sorry, guys. Oh, don't worry. The smell isn't harmful to people, Oscar, she said. If you don't like it, just don't breathe for a while. Hmm. I looked at her strangely. Newsflash, mother. If I don't breathe, I die for sure. My mother was quiet for a minute, and then all at once she hollered, Robert, come in here, please, now. My brother showed up at the doorway. He must, have, he must have known that mom was going to force him to apologize. He must have thought mom was going to pour, force him to apologize. He was smirking when he said, um, because he held his nose and he said he was sorry. He was smirking when he said it, so it didn't count for anything. What does a smirk look like? Kind of a mean look. When he turned to leave, my mother grabbed him by the back of his shirt. No, 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 no. Hold it, buddy boy, she said. I'm sure you'll want to do more to help out than just say you're sorry. After all, because of you, Oscar has a painful spider bite and his room smells like bug spray. Robert looked confused. Yeah, so? So grab your pajamas and come right back. Robert started to argue, but my mom snapped her fingers. And if you're smart, you never argue after my mom snaps her fingers. Soon, Robert was back with his pajamas. He looked nervous as anything. W -w -w what are you going to do to me? He said, I'm not going to do anything to you, Robert. I just thought it would be nice if you traded rooms with Oscar tonight. That way, he'll be able to breathe fresh air and get a good night's sleep. Sleep is very important when you are healing from a spider bite. 
you know. She patted his head. We really do appreciate this, don't we, Oscar? She, she said, I grinned very big. Oh, yes, we definitely do. I went over to my bed and scooped my pillow up with my secret notebook hidden on the inside. When I got to the door, I waved, Night, night, Spider-Man. Ha! What a great line. After that, I went straight to Robert's room and wrote my second ad. Needed temporary home for a wonderful boy. 555-6990. Five, 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 Down the hall, I heard Robert cough again. And I just laughed out loud. That's the end. Do you think we should read one more chapter because it's been so long since I posted? Okay, I'm going to give it a try. Excuse me. All right, guys. The next chapter, which I guess is chapter seven and step six, it's called Getting Closer. The next morning, I put some extra money in my pocket. On the way to school, I stopped at a payphone and placed an ad in the newspaper. I made the same arrangements as to pay as before. After that, it it was as if four more days after that, it was four more days of waiting before I could move on to step number six, show ad to Henson's. This time, the week went by pretty fast. Before I knew it, another Sunday morning had rolled around. And for the third straight Sunday in a row, I asked my parents if I could take the paper up to my room after breakfast. Unlike the week before, I had no trouble finding my ad all by myself. I was right, it was right at the top of page three. I cut it out and put it in my pocket so I could take it down to the street and show it to the Hensons. Then I went downstairs again and gave the paper back to my mother. Oh, good, she said. I want to look and see at those personal ads to see if there's another ad from the Hensons. My heart stopped when she said that. Oh, no, 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 no. I could not let her see those ads. If mom saw the hole that I had cut in page three, I would never be able to explain it. Quickly, I grabbed it back. No, grabbed it. No, you can't, my mother frowned. What do you mean I can't? Give that back to me right now. What's wrong with you anyway, Oscar? Nothing, nothing's wrong with me. It's just that I've already looked for another ad from the Hensons and there isn't one, that's all. Unfortunately, my mom is one of those people who always has to see everything for herself. She searched the paper again. That This called for drastic action. Thinking fast, I bent down and started swatting the floor with it. Seriously, you should have seen me. I was tearing up the paper like you wouldn't believe. Mom folded her arms and glared. She was definitely not happy. What H-E-double-L do you think you're doing, she snapped. I frowned. My mother almost never uses bad language. I mean... I realized that if she spelled a bad word, she spelled a bad word this time, and even spelling a bad word is considered swearing, I think. Um, I used to keep a chart on the number of times that she and my father slipped up and said a bad word. That way, if they ever heard me say a bad word, I could pull out the chart and show them that they weren't perfect anyway. I eventually gave up on the idea, though. Keeping, keeping, keeping up with my father's page became a full-time job. I swatted at the floor a few more times before I finally stood up. Man, Mom, you didn't have to yell. You should be thanking me. In fact, did you see that thing? What thing? What are you talking about? I'm talking about that centipede-looking thing that was on the newspaper right now. How could you not have seen it? It was huge. My mother shivered. She hates centipedes worse than anything. Are you kidding? There was a centipede, she asked. Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry, Oscar. Thank you so much. I just didn't fi couldn't figure out what you were doing. We both looked at the floor, and the paper was lying there in shreds. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry I tore up your paper. Mom shrugged. Oh, well, I guess it doesn't really matter. You said the Hensons didn't have an ad in there, right? Right, I said. I looked very carefully, too, I promise. After that, I picked up the crumbled paper and walked to the back door. I'll throw this out in the trash can, I said. I was going outside anyways. Suddenly, Mom's face brightened. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't you get Robert and go out and play some catch? I rolled my eyes. No offense, Mother, but in case you haven't noticed, I don't care for Robert. 
As I shut the door, mom had already started another one of her talks about deep down, I really love him. I didn't go back. A few minutes later, I walked up to the Henson's driveway and I was hoping that Mr. Henson would be in his garden, but I didn't see him anywhere. That was a disappointment. It was a disappointment too. This would mean that I would have to knock on his front door to get his attention. For some reason, knocking on a person's front door makes me feel so totally, totally self-conscious. I never know what to do after I knock or where to look. Usually, I just rock back and forth pretending I don't care if they come or not, but in my head, I'm secretly wondering if they're peeking out at me through the curtains, hoping that I'll go home. This time, though, it had to be done. I forced myself to walk up to, up to the screen door. I knocked hard. When no one came, I knocked again, and finally I heard footsteps. Why, hello there, Oscar. What a nice surprise, said a pleasant voice. Oh, no, it was Mrs. Henson. I needed to talk to her husband, not her. Oh, hi, Mrs. Henson. It's you. And I leaned my head in the door. Is Mr. Henson here? Could he come out and play for a while, do you think? As soon as I said it, I thought my face turned red. What a dumb thing to say. Could he come out and play? I'm... I mean, what part of my brain did that come from? Mrs. Henson just laughed and said, well, wait here and I'll go see. I sat down on the porch step and if I had one wish in the whole wide world, it would be that nothing dumb would ever come out of my mouth again. And I sat there and waited. I prayed that Mrs. Henson wouldn't tell her husband that I had asked if he could play. And it was an actual prayer to God, I mean. After a minute, the door opened. Hey, does someone out here wanna play with me? He said, he was chuckling. I looked at the sky. Thank you, God. Thank you very much. You couldn't just let it pass, could you? Uh, hi, Mr. Henson. I really didn't mean play exactly. I just wanted to talk to you for a minute, and I hope I'm not bothering you or anything. Of course not. What's on your mind, young fella? I shrugged. Well, mostly, mostly, I wanted to thank you for keeping the secret I told you the other day. I really appreciate having someone to talk to. Mr. Henson put his arm around my shoulders. Sure, son, sure. I've been thinking about you and your family all week. I wish there was something that Mrs. Henson and I could do to help out. It upsets me to think you're all going through such a hard time right now. I nodded, yeah, and it's not getting any better either, Mr. Henson. Have you read today's paper yet? He shook his head, no. No, that's just what I was getting ready to do when you knocked on the door. Okay, well, I bet you haven't seen this yet. He took, I took out the ad and I held it up for him to read. I found this in today's personal ads. Mr. Henson read, read it out loud and it said, needed temporary home for a wonderful boy, 555-6990. I'll show you how it looks. I hope you can see it. Temporary home for a wonderful boy, 555-6990. His jaw opened. Oh, no, he said. You're not trying to tell me that your parents placed this ad, young fellow. I nodded. Yes, I am, Mr. Henson. I said, that's exactly what I'm telling you. My parents are trying to find a nice family to take care of Robert until my father gets some of our money problems worked out. Mr. Henson read the ad again. And you're absolutely positive that your parents placed this ad. This is your phone number, right? Just like before, I had to be very careful about the phone number. Well, it's almost my phone number. See, the paper must have made a mistake because it printed 555-6990 instead of 555-6999. But it's close enough, Mr. Henson. I'm sure that ad is from my parents. I could tell by his expression he believed me. It kind of made me feel bad, too. I really hated lying to a person as nice as Mr. Henson, but I had no choice. If I didn't get rid of Robert pretty soon, I would lose my mind. After a while of sitting here and si after a few minutes of sitting in silence, Mr. Henson finally got up. Well, young fellow, I hope you don't mind, but I think it's time for me to tell Mrs. Henson about this situation. My wife is very good at solving problems and maybe she can think of a way to help. I heaved a big sigh. What does that sound like? <sighs> yeah, well, 
I guess that would be all right, Mr. Henson. But be sure and tell her not to mention any of this to my parents, okay? And she can't mention it to Robert either. Poor little Robert. He's trying to be brave, but it's not easy for him. Mr. Henson patted my arm. Don't worry, young fella. We'll figure something out together. I promise. Everything's going to be okay. You'll see. After that, he turned and he went inside. As soon as he was gone, I started grinning like an idiot. It was so amazing. My plan was clicking and it was happening smoother than I ever imagined. On the way home, I covered my mouth, laughed out loud, just two steps to go and my life would be Robertless. Well, thanks guys. Hopefully it won't be too long till I post again. I hope you have a good night and check out the videos that are on Flipgrid. And when you have time, please add um, a, a video of yourself showing off something at home or something you want to share with us. And if you haven't written me a letter, I'm waiting. Please write me a letter. Thank you. And if you did write me a letter, I wrote you back. Okay. Bye-bye.